Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome to Policy and Rights, the show about government policy and human rights. Welcome back to Depictions Media Radio. I'm your host, Michael Cloggs. In this next segment, we're going to be hearing from Justin Trudeau on November 13th, uh, 2022. Um, uh, Justin Trudeau was in Cambodia, and he is speaking uh, after the conclusion of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit. As seen, as it were, summit. Uh, the Prime Minister is... Um, facing questions on focusing on how on the upcoming uh, G20 summit and uh, on countries like Bali and Indonesia. He is also going to be answering questions about uh, Canada, China, and Canada Russia relations. Um, it be, the interesting part is um, with. Trudeau answering questions on those particular two countries because with the Ukrainian war going on, Canada it has been been one of the major suppliers of arms and equipment uh, for the effort to drive Russia back out of Ukrainian territories. Uh, we're also going to have uh, at this particular uh, summit. Um, Men- Melanie Jolie, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and the in- International Trade Minister, Mary Yin, uh, are going. Uh, were also at this particular summit and advising uh, Justin Trudeau on what is actually happening. So why don't we listen to what... Um, happened at this particular press conference in Cambodia. Hello everyone, and thank you for being here. Today and yesterday, we participated in the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit with our partners here in Cambodia. We announced the great news that ASEAN will elevate our relationship to a strategic partnership. This is an endorsement of Canada's engagement in the region and a step forward towards much closer relations between our countries and our peoples moving forward. Expanding our partnerships and economic ties with countries here is critical for Canada. Earlier this week, Minister Joly announced our upcoming Indo-Pacific strategy. This will be a major shift to strengthen our engagement in the region in the long term. ASEAN is central to the Indo-Pacific region where we are right now. It's a growing hub for trade and investment that fosters open markets and creates good, meaningful jobs now and into the future as the Canadian economy grows. The Indo-Pacific is a priority for Canadians. Ensemble, les 10 pays membres de l'Association des Nations de l'Asie du Sud-Est représentent la cinquième plus grande économie au monde et la troisième plus grande population. C'est une région qui a énormément de potentiel. Si on veut créer des bons emplois pour la classe moyenne et aider nos entreprises canadiennes à prospérer, 
on doit être encore plus présent ici. Il faut développer de nouveaux marchés. Il faut être compétitif. C'est comme ça qu'on va maintenir la position du Canada comme un vrai joueur mondial. Voilà pourquoi on est ici aujourd'hui, qu'on va être au G20 en Indonésie demain et qu'on va participer au sommet de l'APEC en Thaïlande. Yesterday, I shared that we'll be investing in a fund to help advance the negotiation of a free trade agreement with ASEAN. We'll also invest in a new Canadian trade gateway in Southeast Asia, a trade gateway that will help Canadian businesses expand into Indo-Pacific markets, linking them to incubators, entrepreneurs, and accelerators. These investments will mean more jobs for Canadians and more growth for ASEAN economies. While we invest to create more jobs and more opportunities for people, we're also working to build a more resilient future. Around the world, over the past years, we've been seeing flooding, hurricanes, and wildfires caused by climate change. The consequences of climate change are real for our communities and for our economies. Many countries in Southeast Asia, especially coastal ones with islands, just like Canada, are even more vulnerable to climate change. Over the next five years, we'll invest here in the Indo-Pacific region to increase international assistance to partner countries, including support for sustainable and climate-resilient infrastructure. We're also stepping up our work to protect the environment. Canada has world-class expertise in oceans management, and we can use this expertise to help. We're committed to keep the ocean healthy in the Indo-Pacific region, and we'll invest to create a new Shared Oceans Fund. This will include support for measures against illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. Keeping our oceans healthy is important for the environment, and it's also important for jobs, trade, and security. Bâtir un avenir durable, c'est aussi de s'assurer que tout le monde et une chance égale de réussir. Plus tôt aujourd'hui, j'ai participé à un événement pour la paix et la sécurité des femmes, et j'en ai profité pour annoncer qu'on va mettre sur pied un plan d'action en partenariat avec l'Association des Nations de l'Asie du Sud-Est. J'ai aussi annoncé un investissement pour aider des organisations canadiennes à promouvoir l'égalité des sexes dans la région Indo-Pacifique et encourager la réussite des femmes et des filles. Bien sûr, cette semaine, je vais continuer de dénoncer la guerre illégale et brutale de la Russie en Ukraine. C'est une guerre qui fait des ravages horribles et qui a des répercussions partout dans le monde. Poutine a créé une crise énergétique, de l'insécurité alimentaire et de l'inflation à travers le monde. Plus que jamais, c'est le moment de collaborer pour faire face à ces défis. Canada is home to some of the largest diasporas of Southeast Asians in the world. To continue strengthening ties between our peoples, we'll expand the successful Canada ASEAN Scholarships and Exchanges program. Southeast Asian students enrich our universities and communities, and we want to provide them with even more opportunities to study in Canada. We're here this week to make Canada more competitive and to show the world what we have to offer. We're deepening and strengthening our engagement in the region for the long term, and we're focused on creating jobs and opportunities for Canadian businesses. I look forward to continuing this work at the G20 in Indonesia, at APAC in Thailand, and over the months and years to come. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. En vos questions. Thank you, Prime Minister. And I'll start with the Canadian reporters. One question, one follow-up. Hi, Mr. Trudeau. Mackenzie Gray with Global. Um, we've reported that CSIS gave you a briefing that in 2019 China interfered in the Canadian election. At the G20, you're going to be sitting beside Xi Jinping. Are you going to raise this issue with him? Let me first highlight something that Canadians can be reassured by. We created a special independent commission made up of top officials and security experts to ensure that our elections continue to be free and fair in Canada. And in both the 2019 and 2021 elections, they reported that our elections uh, unfolded uh, with integrity. 
So Canadians, yes, why we need to be mindful uh, about the real threats of foreign interference that exist at home and around the world. They can also be reassured that our institutions are strong, that our democracy is strong, uh, and that we have measures in place to ensure uh, that people know about it if uh, anything does happen. Um, but of course, uh, we're always going to engage uh, with leaders in ways uh, that highlight concerns of Canadians, uh, that stand up for our values and uh, underscore preoccupations uh, that Canadians have about things going on in the world. That's one of the reasons why these summits are so important to bring people together. And we're going to continue to make sure that uh, uh, Canadians' preoccupations but also Canadians' opportunities are highlighted in the world. Je veux mettre quelque chose au clair tout d'abord. On est bien sûr toujours préoccupé d'assurer que nos élections soient rigoureuses et faites comme il faut. C'est pour ça qu'on a créé un comité de hauts fonctionnaires et experts en sécurité pour s'assurer que le déroulement de nos élections se passe avec intégrité. Et dans leur rapport sur les élections de 2019 et 2021, ils ont confirmé euh, que notre processus électoral a demeuré intègre. Je pense que les Canadiens sont très conscients qu'il y a des acteurs dans le monde qui veulent déstabiliser différentes démocraties, mais ils peuvent aussi savoir qu'au Canada, on a la résilience et on a une force d'institutions et de démocratie euh, qui continue d'être robuste et intègre. Mais euh, bien sûr, euh, par rapport aux conversations qu'on va avoir avec différents euh, chefs d'État euh, pendant ces, ces voyages, on va toujours souligner et les préoccupations des Canadiens et soutenir nos valeurs et amener les opportunités que nous avons pour créer plus de prospérité pour les Canadiens et pour nos partenaires à travers le monde. So you're saying you're willing to have conversations with other leaders, but I just want to come back to the question and drill down on Xi Jinping. Are you going to raise this specific issue with him? Uh, as always, I will raise uh, issues of human rights, issues of, of uh, matters that uh, preoccupy with Canadians, with uh, any and all leaders that I engage. En français, s'il vous plaît. Okay. Uh, comme toujours, je vais souligner la question uh, des droits humains, des principes uh, de défense de nos institutions avec uh, tous les leaders avec qui j'ai des conversations. Hi, Annie Bergeron Oliver with CTV National News. You have previously said that it would be unproductive and extraordinarily difficult to have Putin currently at the table. Putin is not going to be at the G20, but Lavrov is. Do you believe that Russia should even have a position at the table anymore at the G20? I think because the biggest question that we are facing uh, in the world right now as a global economy. Uh, is in part the instability that flows from Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, the energy crisis that has flowed from it, the inflation crisis that has flowed from it, the uh, food crisis that has flowed from Russia's illegal actions. It's important that as a G20, uh, we uh, work together to deal with threats to the global economy. Uh, we know uh, that Russia has continued to spread misinformation and disinformation on their role in global instability and the conversations we'll have around the G20 uh, will be very, very clear to all our partners uh, that Russia is responsible for uh, making an already challenging world so much more challenging for millions, if not billions, uh, of citizens uh, who are suffering, uh, not just those directly impacted by its illegal war in Ukraine, uh, but those who are disrupted by the challenges of the global economy that it has caused. En français, s'il vous plaît. Okay. Uh, C'est très clair que au G20, quand on parle de défis uh, pour l'économie mondiale, uh, on va certainement se pencher sur un des plus gros défis de l'économie mondiale. C'est l'instabilité causée par l'invasion illégale de la Russie en Ukraine que ce soit la crise alimentaire, que ce soit la crise énergétique, l'inflation mondiale, tout a été aggravé par euh, cette décision injustifiable de Vladimir Poutine d'envahir euh, 
un, un pays euh, voisin. Et donc, euh, les conversations que nous allons avoir en tant que leader du G20 vont souligner à quel point la Russie euh, doit être tenue responsable et comment nous, nous allons devoir renforcer les règles et les principes de droit et de justice qui doivent soutenir notre, euh, notre, euh, notre système international. Today, you took an emotional tour of Cambodia's Genocide Museum. Tomorrow, you're going to be at the G20 with China. Now, the Canadian Parliament has already called China's treatment of the Uyghurs a genocide, so why haven't you? As I've seen when I visited the Shoah Memorial, the Holocaust Memorial in Israel, as I've seen as I visited the Holocaust Memorial, the, the Genocide Memorial in Rwanda, uh, as I saw today um, visiting uh, and seeing the history of the genocide that happened here in Cambodia, the word genocide acts of genocide are things to be taken incredibly seriously as a, as a world. And we have um, objective, historical, uh, expert processes to put in place those words and those designations. We continue to call out vicious human rights abuses around the world, including against the Uyghurs, uh, in Xinjiang by the Chinese government, but designations of genocide need to be made by uh, proper uh, international authorities. On peut voir à travers le monde les résultats de génocide, que ce soit visitant des mémoriaux à l'Holocauste, que ce soit euh, quand j'ai visité euh, le musée de, du génocide rwandais, que ce soit aujourd'hui où j'ai vu les atrocités perpétrées dans le génocide ici au Cambodge. C'est un, un mot, une désignation lourde de valeur et d'importance dans le monde. Et ce doit, ça doit être par des processus euh, fiables et indépendants qu'on utilise ces mots-là pour ne pas risquer de ternir le poids des événements de génocide reconnus à travers le monde. Mais nous avons toujours reconnu euh, les les actes de, de violence et les, euh, les attaques aux droits profondément profonds et fondamentaux des gens qui se passent en Xinjiang contre les Ouïghours perpétrés par le gouvernement chinois. Et nous allons continuer euh, d'appeler pour plus de transparence, plus d'ouverture et plus de responsabilité du gouvernement chinois pour ces actes euh, horribles. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Louis Blouin de Radio-Canada. Si vous en avez l'occasion pendant le G20, est-ce que vous allez vous adresser directement, interpeller personnellement Sergei Lavrov? Euh, tout d'abord, euh, Vladimir Poutine et le gouvernement et l'administration russe euh, savent tous très bien la position du Canada, que leur guerre illégale en Ukraine est non seulement dévastateur pour les gens en Ukraine, mais déstabilise l'économie mondiale. C'est une erreur monumentale qu'ils ont fait pour laquelle ils vont être tenus responsables. Moi, ma priorité au G20, ça va être de souligner à quel point ça devient de plus en plus insoutenable pour les autres pays dans le monde, de continuer à appuyer 
ou même juste à ne pas condamner la Russie pour ses actes euh, horrifiques et déstabilisatrices pour les gens à travers le monde. Nous nous rassemblons au G20 pour, justement, nous existons en tant que G20, les grandes économies du monde, pour pouvoir s'adresser ensemble à, aux grands enjeux dans l'économie mondiale. Il y a très peu de grands enjeux qui ont autant d'importance ces jours-ci que cette euh, erreur monumentale que Poutine a faite en envahissant l'Ukraine, en déstabilisant l'économie mondiale. Um, Russian officials and leaders, including Vladimir Putin, know full well what Canada's position is on their illegal and unjustifiable war in Ukraine. It was a monumental mistake. It was a violation of the principles of the UN, the principles of sovereignty and territorial integrity that all countries around the world hold dear to. And the work of the G20 is for the largest economies in the world to come together to address the biggest economic challenges the world is facing. And in this particular G20, Russia is directly and uniquely responsible for a large part of the challenges the world is facing right now, whether it's the global inflation crisis, the global food crisis, the global energy crisis, all because uh, Vladimir Putin made a terrible choice and invaded a peaceful neighboring nation. Ma question, M. Trudeau, c'est de savoir, est-ce que vous jugez ça utile, vous, personnellement, d'interpeller directement Sergei Lavrov pendant ce sommet-là? Moi, je vais passer mon temps à parler euh, aux différents chefs. Euh, je, si euh, Lavrov est autour de la table, il va certainement m'entendre euh, condamner directement euh, la, les actions de la Russie et les conséquences de la Russie. En général, euh, je n'ai pas particulièrement intérêt à parler directement à, à Lavrov. Euh, je sais que Mélanie, euh, ma ministre d'Affaires étrangères, l'a fait à plusieurs reprises. Euh, ils savent très bien mes positions et nos positions et la position des Canadiens euh, sur euh, euh, la guerre illégale qu'ils sont en train de mener. Um, I will always be very clear on how Canada stands with Ukraine and how Canada continues to pull together countries around the world uh, to counter Russian misinformation and disinformation. Um, I will be engaging directly with uh, leaders at the G20. I know uh, Melanie, our foreign minister, has had many direct conversations with uh, Sergei Lavrov to highlight Canada's position. Uh, but my focus is going to be making sure that the world comes together uh, to uh, reinforce that Putin made a terrible, terrible choice when he decided to invade a peaceful neighboring country. Hi, Prime Minister Rafi Bujikan, UN CBC News. You haven't yet clarified whether you'll be talking to China's president at all at the G20. Now, Joe Biden has the same tough stance as you on China, but he's meeting with President Xi Jinping. Why aren't you? We, as always, the G20 is an opportunity to meet with a range of leaders and advance Canada's interests and positions, and that's exactly what we'll continue to do. And uh, just on matters back home, we're watching hospitalization rates skyrocket at the moment. Ontario is going to start urging people to publicly wear masks again. Are you considering bringing back federal public uh, mask mandates? The single best thing Canadians can do to prevent our hospitals from getting overwhelmed, to keep themselves and their loved ones safe during the coming winter months, is to make sure your vaccinations are up to date. Please, like I did uh, just a few days ago, get your booster for COVID-19, get your flu shot at the same time, make sure your kids get boosted. Canada made it through the first waves of COVID-19 better than many other countries in the world, both on the health side, but also on the economic side, because 
Canadians stepped up with some of the highest vaccination rates of anyone in the world. And if we want to have a better winter than many other countries will, we need to do what we know how to do. Go out, get vaccinated for yourself, for your loved ones, and for, uh, uh, for the frontline health workers who are uh, struggling, as always, uh, with a rise in cases as winter approaches. Hi, Prime Minister Tom Perry, CBC. Sergei Lavrov actually walked out of a G20 meeting in July when Russia was criticized uh, for its invasion of Ukraine. I'm wondering if you or other countries are planning any kind of gesture, symbolic or otherwise, uh, when Mr. Lavrov speaks at the G20. Uh, we're continuing to, uh, uh, you know, to, to look at the best way uh, for us to highlight uh, our disagreements uh, with the kinds of misinformation and disinformation that Russia has consistently put forward. Um, our focus is going to be very much on ensuring uh, that all countries in the G20 understand the responsibility that Russia holds for the challenges facing citizens in all of our countries and indeed in countries around the world. Um, I have uh, a strong suspicion that uh, uh, the Russian representative will not like what he is going to be hearing from uh, a large number of, uh, of us at the G20, highlighting the lies uh, that Russia continues to try and peddle in the world uh, as it issues its direct responsibilities uh, for global instability, uh, for economic hardships, uh, and for uh, increasing food insecurity all around the world. Is there any reason, though, for you to sit there and listen to Sergei Lavrov if he's going to be giving the same Russian line as before? Uh, I, uh, I will be focused on listening to leaders. I'm not even sure that Lavrov is going to be speaking. Okay. Uh, moi, j'ai toujours uh, l'intention d'écouter uh, les différents chefs d'État qui seront là. Uh, je suis même pas sûr que je vais avoir l'occasion d'entendre M. Lavrov. We'll take one last question. Hi, Prime Minister. Dylan Robertson with the Canadian Press. Going into the G20, do you have any fear of undermining the chance of consensus on various issues by pushing to isolate Russia when other G20 countries clearly don't share your views? The G20 was pulled together by former Canadian Prime Minister Paul Martin as a way for the largest economies in the world to come together despite all their differences in approaches and styles of government and, and values, but to allow a place for these countries to come together to talk about the big common issues we're facing around the global economy. Could be around global recessions, could be around uh, challenges around climate change or other global issues that are impacting our economy. In this case, the largest issue we're facing with that the global economy is struggling with is the inflation crisis, the energy crisis, the food crisis that is directly caused by and aggravated by Russia's ill-advised choice to invade a peaceful neighboring country. That is going to be on the agenda. It's the heart of why so many of our citizens are struggling right now. And it would be irresponsible for us as leaders to not come together to recognize that and to be very clear that sovereignty, territorial integrity are things that all countries need to be standing up for and defending. And even those countries that uh, have not pronounced themselves as clearly as I think they should on Russia's responsibility for this impact on the world will always stand up to defend territorial integrity and sovereignty, two principles that Russia flagrantly violated uh, with its choice to invade Ukraine. Uh, and a question for you, Prime Minister, and hopefully both your ministries as well. Uh, coming out of the Chinese Communist Party Congress, what is it that worries each of you the most about Xi? I think we're all seeing uh, that China is uh, taking up, uh, uh, taking a more 
uh, active role in the world and the global economy. We need to figure out how to engage with it in a way that is consistent not just with our values, uh, but our, uh, our interests as Canadians. There are some situations that we're going to be uh, challenging them directly on human rights, on uh, use of coercive diplomacy, on lack of respect for the rule of law. There are other situations, whether it's on climate change or certain parts of global trade, where we're going to have to figure out how to work with them. But we're going to do it uh, with clear eyes and strong positions around our values to make sure that everything we do is about standing up for Canadians, standing up for opportunities for Canadians, um, because that's what people expect and that's what we'll continue to do. But happy to turn it to Melanie. Les Canadiens s'attendent à ce qu'on continue de défendre nos valeurs et nos intérêts quand on s'engage avec la Chine et quand on est en train d'être actif à l'échelle mondiale et qu'on voit la place que la Chine continue de prendre dans nos économies et dans, dans les affaires mondiales. Il y a des enjeux sur lesquels on va mettre au défi directement le gouvernement chinois, que ce soit sur les droits humains, que ce soit dans la règle de droit, que ce soit au niveau de la diplomatie coercitive qu'ils ont utilisée. Nous allons être très clairs hein, d'être là pour défendre les Canadiens et nos intérêts. Mais il y a aussi des occasions où on va devoir, euh, on va pouvoir travailler avec eux pour lutter contre les changements climatiques, par exemple, avec la COP15 qu'on est en train euh, de, euh, de co-présider à Montréal dans quelques semaines, ou dans des engagements au niveau du commerce international, où il y a des opportunités pour nos entreprises, nos travailleurs. Mais nous allons le faire de façon responsable, qui est toujours là pour défendre les intérêts et les valeurs des Canadiens. Mélanie? Merci, M. le Premier ministre. Um, Dylan, when you look at the speech I gave uh, nearly a, a week ago, one thing that was highlighted is how much China is trying to influence international norms in its favor, which really departs from our own interests and values. And so that's my main concern as foreign minister, because it creates more instability in the world and it's a threat to uh, peace and security in general. So that's why also we're here. We're here because we know that for ASEAN, it's extremely important to have international norms and, and rules respected because they have kept us safe since the Second World War. And that's why Canada is also investing so much in this relationship. Um, ma plus grande préoccupation présentement lorsque vient la question de la Chine, c'est vraiment le fait que de plus en plus, la Chine essaie de, de transformer les règles internationales en sa faveur. Et ce faisant, ça, ça a un impact parce que c'est à l'encontre des intérêts et des valeurs du Canada et des Canadiens. Et lorsque la Chine essaie de faire ça, ça crée beaucoup d'instabilité dans le monde. Et c'est une menace directe à la paix et à la sécurité de, dans le fond du monde entier. Et c'est pour ça qu'on est ici. C'est pour ça que c'est si important que le Canada soit ici à ASEAN. Parce que ASEAN veut s'assurer de faire respecter ces normes internationales-là. Ils sont des alliés du Canada. Et nous sommes des alliés d'ASEAN. Et donc, vous avez entendu euh, le premier ministre parce que notre engagement fait partie de notre vision de maintenir les règles qui font en sorte qu'on a une peine stabilité depuis la Deuxième Guerre mondiale. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister. Um, we've been really clear, particularly with uh, Canadian businesses. I've certainly been clear as uh, their trade minister and their business minister that we will support them wherever they operate in the world, including in China. But as uh, as Minister Jolie has, uh, you know, has said, 
we also want to make sure that businesses understand the kinds of risks that may be there for them and uh, and to pursue the, their economic interests, understanding the kind of risk uh, that they may be taking on. So we will continue to support Canadian businesses, particularly in trade, and, uh, and that work uh, will continue. Thank you, everyone. This is what ends press conference. This is what ends the press conference of Canada. Okay, so um, Michael Cloggs here again, your host on Depictions Media Radio. And next we're going to hear from Melanie Jolie, uh, Foreign Affairs Minister for Canada, as she speaks about aid for Ukraine, Canada and, Ch and China relations, as she is still in Bali and in, um, and in Asia talking about G20 summits along with uh, Justin Trudeau. In her remarks, she will be responding to journalists about questions and comments um, on Canada's an announcement for $500 million in additional military aid for Ukraine and its announcement of, uh, of additional sanctions against Russia and Canada-China relations. So let's listen to what Melody Jolie has to say as she is joined with her assistants. Well, folks, um, Vladimir Putin will have to get used to seeing blue and yellow flags. Um, the Ukrainian flag is now flying back over Kherson, and Canada will stand with Ukraine until every city of the country are able to fly uh, the Ukrainian flag again. Et donc Vladimir Poutine devra s'habituer à voir des drapeaux uh, bleus et jaunes parce que le drapeau ukrainien flotte maintenant à nouveau au-dessus de Kherson. Et le Canada sera aux côtés des Ukrainiens tant et si longtemps, bien entendu, que tous les drapeaux euh, ukrainiens flottent au-dessus du pays. Today, we announced $500 million of additional military support to Ukraine. Um, we also announced important Mininsky-like sanctions uh, against those who launch a witch hunt against Vladimir Karamudza. Vladimir Karamudza is an important Russian dissident um, that criticized the war in Ukraine back in spring and was afterwards jailed because of his comments. I met with Bill Browder and Karamudza's wife uh, a month ago in Ottawa and they have been advo advocating for a long time for these sanctions. Uh, we will be making sure that the 23 individuals' uh, sanctions are also sanctions by other countries, including the U.S. and the EU, and I uh, promised Karamudza's wife that uh, Canada would be leading on this very issue. So that's why it's an important announcement we're making today. Um, Vous avez entendu un peu plus tôt euh, la nouvelle. Nous annonçons 500 millions euh, d'aide militaire de plus pour soutenir l'Ukraine. Nous, nous annonçons aussi d'importantes sanctions euh, de type Maninsky à l'encontre de ceux et celles qui ont lancé une chasse aux sorcières euh, contre euh, Karamudza. Vladimir Karamudza est ce dissident russe euh, qui euh, a critiqué la guerre en Ukraine. Euh, printemps dernier et qui a été par la suite emprisonné euh, pour ses propos. J'ai rencontré euh, Bill Browder et euh, la femme de Karamudza il y a environ un mois. Je leur ai promis à l'époque que non seulement nous allions imposer ces sanctions, mais aussi que nous allions travailler à convaincre euh, les Américains et les Européens à faire de même. Et donc, le Canada va démontrer du leadership sur cette question. C'est important que nous continuions à isoler la Russie d'un point de vue diplomatique d'un point de vue économique et d'un point de vue politique. Alors, uh, my colleague and I are ready to take your questions. Mm -hmm. On the $500 million, um, 
how long is it going to take the money to flow? What's it going to buy? And where is this equipment going to come from? Mm -hmm. So I've already mentioned that uh, it will be military support. Our goal is to make sure that the troops in Ukraine on the ground uh, have access to uh, additional military support soon, and we'll have more details uh, to provide in the in the coming days and weeks. And I know my colleague Minister Anan is on this is working on this issue. And can you explain how the sanctions are going to work? Uh, they're magnificently tight. Yeah. So what will this allow you to do? So what we're doing is we're using the SEMA legislation, but uh, under what we're doing is we're imposing sanctions based on human rights violations, which is really rarely done. And that's exactly what Bill Browder was asking us to do. And uh, we decided to um, basically do it because it's the right thing to do. Madame Lally, j'aimerais savoir si vous êtes prête à signer, ou si le Canada en fait est prêt à signer un communiqué final à la fin du G20, si le nom de euh, la Russie apparaît dessus. Est-ce que, est que vous êtes prêt à signer un communiqué final conjoint avec la Russie? Si on enlève peut-être les questions euh, ukrainiennes, chaîne d'approvisionnement par exemple, d'autres enjeux, ou est-ce que vous allez vous retirer d'un communiqué final? Mais premièrement, les négociations en cours, donc on va laisser les... les euh, les euh, directeurs politiques faire leur boulot. Euh, ce que je peux vous dire par ailleurs, c'est que euh, la question de l'Ukraine, elle est au, au cœur de notre politique euh, étrangère. On la soulève à tous les forums. Nous le faisons encore au G20 et euh, nous le faisons de concert avec nos alliés, certainement avec euh, les autres pays du G7. Donc, le Canada pourrait signer un communiqué conjointement avec la Russie? Il est très important que euh, nous continuions, à, comme je disais, isoler politiquement, diplomatiquement, économiquement la Russie et en même temps que euh, la question de l'Ukraine soit au cœur des conversations que nous avons ici au G20. Mais est-ce que vous allez signer ou pas un communiqué si la Russie le signe aussi? Comme je vous ai dit, le plus important, c'est qu'on laisse les négociateurs faire leur travail, mais puisque le, le conflit en Ukraine a une, un impact international et a un impact particulièrement sur la question de l'inflation. Le G20 est un forum où les discussions ont cours sur des enjeux économiques. Alors, les questions de sécurité et ce qui se passe en Ukraine ont un impact direct sur l'économie. Alors, c'est évident qu'il faut en parler. I don't think any country would say that to Canada. We've been very principled in our approach towards uh, the Ukrainian conflict. What I can tell you, though, is Indonesia is between a, a rock and a hard place. Uh, I was here back in May uh, dealing with the Indonesian foreign minister and also with the president to find ways for Indonesia to be able to deal with this very important issue, which is the war in Ukraine it's, and its impact on uh, on the global economy. So Canada's work is always to make sure that we can bring countries along, that we can find ways to address even difficult issues. And that's why we've been having a, many ongoing conversations with Indonesia. There's been some rumblings around the G20 since we've been here that some of the Western countries are considering walking out with that something We are always coordinating with our allies uh, on this very issue, and I'm in contact with many of my American and European colleagues. On China, um, the Australians met with Chinese officials yesterday at ASEAN. Uh, Biden is meeting with Xi right now. The Australians have a meeting tomorrow with Xi, and so do the French. So is Canada purposely not meeting with Chinese officials or representatives, or are we being frozen out from the conversation? Well, I was back in July here in Bali for the, uh, the G20 foreign minister uh, meeting. And I had a very important conversation with my Chinese counterpart, Wang Li. Um, and we've been uh, engaging with China on the, very important of bio, uh, on the very important issue of biodiversity because in less than a month, there will be a conference held in Canada, in Montreal, on biodiversity that will be uh, under China's presidency. And so it is important for Canada to continue to have these open um, channels with China. But at the same time, our stance is clear. I've made uh, an important speech last week, and this is how we will deal with China going forward. Well, respectfully, that was then, and this is 
now. So has Canada reached out to China to have a meeting, or are they not interested in meeting with Canada at all? Of course, I'll have uh, discussions with my counterpart as I'll be sitting next to him uh, throughout this G20. Okay, so we've heard from uh, the, the of course, uh, Justin Trudeau and Manly Jolly from Asia and how they are planning to support uh, the Ukraine uh, with the $500 million, and also how they are politically going to be supporting the idea of Russian locking away citizens because they disagree with what they are doing. Um in certain parts of the world, we, we just don't have the ability to speak freely about how we feel about what our government is doing. We can't say that, hey, our government did wrong. We are lucky here in Canada, in the United States, as well as Great Britain, for all of you who are listening, that we can actually say, no, you, we did wrong. But that we can cast a ballot that says, hey, we want to see change. And... We've seen examples of that across all three countries, and we've uh, we're watching the, this particular thing happen as the Republicans in the in the United States have tried to suppress votes and have been very unsuccessful at suppressing them. We have also seen that in our social media, where there are reports saying that social media is going to die out, and. The, the idea is that the um, the corporate response to that is we need to silence some of the people who are speaking truth. With that, I want to thank everybody for listening. Please do subscribe to Depictions Media on whatever platform that you're listening to us on. And support independent media who is just simply trying to tell the truth without the corporate story. This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.